Hello folks, welcome to Zig Wheels. Now, I know a lot of you were bummed that we didn't let you see the new Verna last time round in our first look video. So, I'm gonna shut up and let you do just that. The Verna has evolved. It doesn't have the wow factor that the fluidic Verna had when it debuted back in 2011, but it does look striking, especially in this awesome orange paint job. It now carries an added dose of maturity and class. If you eye the top spec versions, you do get quite a lot of kit, including projector headlamps with daytime running lamps, projector fog lamps, 16 inch diamond cut alloy wheels and LED tail lamps. Thankfully, Hyundai hasn't gone overboard with the chrome with just some subtle touches around the new cascading grille, the window line and on the boot. And changes are more than just skin deep. The Verna sits on a new K2 platform that's shared with the Elantra. It's longer and wider and the wheelbase has gone up by 30 millimeters as well. Now, this should mean that space at the back should be better. Uh, not really. Well, space was never the Verna's forte to begin with. And in spite of the bigger dimensions, it hasn't really translated into better room for the rear occupants. As you can see, the front seat is set to my driving position. I'm roughly six foot tall and I've got just about adequate space here. And I feel like I'm sitting a bit too close to the roof because of the sloping roof line, headroom is going to be a problem, especially if you're over six foot tall. What's good is that Hyundai has managed to carve out some space under the front seat, so you can put your foot underneath. But on the whole, it still doesn't feel as roomy as the Honda City or even the Maruti Sia's. Seating three in the rear bench is possible, but it's definitely not recommended. Also, the window line moves upwards, which takes away from the sense of space. To counter that, Hyundai has stuck with the tried and tested beige and black interior combination to uplift the ambience. There's some brass silver accents too that work well to lend some contrast. But the design as a whole fails to wow. Just like the exteriors, it is subdued and designed not to distract you on the go. What's really, really good is the overall fit, finish and quality. It's nearly on par with the Germans and since this is a Hyundai, you get loads and loads of features. If you intend on spending most of your time in the rear bench, you do get quite a lot. For instance, you get rear AC vents, there's a central armrest, there's a curtain that you can use and there's a USB charging socket as well but you better have a long charging cable because there isn't space down there to keep your phone. And the big feature list continues as you move to the front. The SX option variant gets a 7 inch touchscreen infotainment system paired with 6 speakers. There's Android Auto, Apple CarPlay and a Bluetooth enabled remote control app that lets you control the audio system. You also get a sunroof, ventilated seats and a push button starter. There are 6 airbags on offer too, but more importantly, dual airbags and ABS are standard across the range. The SX option also gets the smart trunk feature that pops open the boot provided you're stationary for 3 seconds and not more than 3 feet away from the car. The boot itself isn't the biggest at 480 litres, but it's got enough space for the weekend trip. If it's the top spec diesel automatic that you want, you'll have to settle for this, the SX Plus variant. And apart from the obvious misses such as the leatherette seats and uh, ventilated function for the front passengers or even a push button start, there are some small but important misses like there's no rear adjustable headrest or there's no boot release switch on the outside. On the features front, Hyundai has got the mix right. That said, we really wish the Verna had telescopic adjust for the steering. 
But that aside, even the mid-spec EX and SX trim seem well loaded for the price and you now get a choice of two engines instead of earlier four. Werner gets a pair of 1.6 litre engines, both of which can be had with a 6-speed manual transmission or a 6-speed torque converter automatic. Now let's kick things off with the diesel which makes 128 PS of power and 260 newton meters of torque. The highlight of the diesel motor is its sheer drivability. The torque, there's enough of it no matter where you are in the rev range. So inside the city, whether you're driving the manual or the automatic, a simple dab of the throttle will get you past the car in front. This is down to the wider torque band. Hyundai says that the Werner diesel makes more torque at lower revs and that can be felt when you're driving about in the city. But steady pace is the name of the game with the motor. The Werner builds speed effortlessly and maintains it as well. But it doesn't feel eager to get there. Even on the highways, you can dance out of your lane, step on the gas and execute a clean overtake as long as you aren't in a hurry. And things are no different when you switch over to the petrol. The 1.6 litre petrol motor makes 123 PS of power and 151 Newton meters of torque. But that too isn't delivered in a hurry. We also got to drive the petrol for a brief time and the key highlight just like the diesel is the refinement. In fact, you can't tell if the engine's running. Second, drive the petrol about for a bit and you quickly realize that the focus is on improving everyday drivability, everyday usability more than outright performance. If you absolutely need to get a move on, you will have to keep it in a lower gear and make sure the taco is sticking around 3500 to 5000 rpm because that's where the torque is. Push it any further and it runs out of steam. In other words, don't bother redlining it. If a relaxed drive is what you want, you now get the option of picking the new 6-speed automatic that replaces the old 4-speed units. Irrespective of the engine it's mated with, gear shifts are quick, smooth and early. The gearbox complements the laid-back nature of both engines nicely. It feels unpolished only when you break out the heavy foot. And when it shifts at the red line, it feels slightly jerky. There's no sports mode, but you do get a manual mode instead. But we'd rather leave it in drive simply because it isn't any quicker when you take charge. So, in spite of the power figures being identical on paper, Hyundai have managed to make the Verna a lot more easier to drive. And what they've also managed to do is teach the Verna some really good manners. The steering is not dead and that's a good thing. It's light enough at city speeds, weighs just as you want on the highways and it's reasonably quick and direct. Um, it is communicative, yes, but I wouldn't go as far as to call it a sporty setup. Then there's the way it rides. It feels comfortable over a variety of surfaces, paver blocks, pimpled roads, you name it. The Werner's ride is surprisingly absorbing at city speeds and just like the engine, the suspension goes about its business in a very silent manner. And it doesn't feel floaty at highway speeds. The bounciness that the Werner was associated with, that's gone, it rides flat, it's composed at triple digit speeds and there is a bit of body roll when you chuck it really hard into a corner but it is predictable and more importantly, it's manageable. The Werner might not be an outright sporty sedan but it definitely is the sportiest one yet. The engine, suspension and steering manage to deliver a combination that's likeable not only on a daily basis but also when you're in the mood for some fun. Now that's a tough balance to achieve and dare we say it's the only one in its class to pull it off. So 
the Werner doesn't really wow you in the first go. And as you can see, the exterior and the interior design is a lot more mature than it used to be. Maybe the package is a bit too boring for some people, but the maturity can be felt in the way the Werner drives, be it the petrol or the diesel, the manual or the automatic. And unlike before, it has managed to strike a nice balance between ride comfort and handling. If it had a little more space at the back, the Werner would have definitely hit the ball out of the park. Because with that three-year warranty, that sweet pricing, the Hyundai levels of fit, finish and quality and the class-leading features, the Werner sort of deserves to sit on the top of the segment. For more details on the Hyundai Verna and prices in your city, make sure you click on this icon above or check the link in the description below. If you've got any questions, queries or doubts, leave them down there and we'll be more than happy to answer them. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the Zigwheels YouTube channel for more such content.